Hi, my name is Michael Swartz. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to displace geometry using digital elevation model data from the U.S. Geological Survey website. And you can go to nationalmap.gov and you're going to look for the 3DEP product downloads. And these are free or paid for by the American taxpayers. And there's actually really high resolution, nice depth maps that you can get, like this one of the Grand Canyon. And the format of this, it's a grayscale image, um, and it can be uh, 8 bits or higher per channel. So let's switch over to ZBrush now. And in ZBrush, we just need to make a polyplane, subdivide it, make sure it has UVs, and displace it. So this is the process. First, let's make a poly mesh plane. So we'll click on this tool palette and then add a plane 3D. Okay, and then uh, we'll just draw it onto the screen here. Click and drag with your left mouse button and press the T key immediately to go into edit mode, which is right here. All right, and now let's also turn on the perspective, the this perspective distortion and the poly frames so we can kind of keep an eye on the subdivisions visually. Okay, so the uh, first thing we need to do is uh, we need to give this some uh, UVs. All right, so that the, uh, but before we actually do that, we kind of have to get out of this um, initial uh, shape that it has created. So um, it's kind of like construction history in Maya. We're going to just get rid of it by making it a poly mesh. And then we'll go down here to UV map and we'll uh, set this to be a 4K map and we'll create and we'll use a planar UVP map on that. All right, and then we'll uh, go up to geometry and we'll divide this. Let's go up to seven, and that will essentially turn this into a, probably a four or five million poly model. Okay, and now let's go down to uh, textures and go load up our texture map. Okay, and now that that's in the textures, we can actually turn that texture into a poly painting. Um, so we're actually shading the individual polygons with the texture map. So go to poly paint, and we're going to colorize or, or poly paint from the texture. And this is MRGB draw mode is off, so we need to turn that back on, and, uh, and that's up here. Okay, now let's try that again. Poly paint from texture. All right, good. And then we can go to um, masking and choose uh, mask by color and we're going to mask by intensity all right and now we can go to the deformation and under there's two inflates we're going to use this top one just the regular inflate let's uncheck the x and the y and then click on the inflate word and let's just type in 100 and now we can um, uh, deselect everything uh, and if you control click outside, it turns off the the uh, mask. And we can also change the material. And also, let's turn off the uh, the texture map as well. So let's go to this texture map and just select none. Okay. And same with the poly painting. Let's turn off colorize. All right. And then. Let's change the material right now. It's set to be this um, kind of uh, the set to be the matte cap red by default, uh, which is a nice one actually. You can see that the the uh, terrain has been nicely displaced. Lots of detail. All right, so this model right here, let's see how many polys it is. So it's a 4 million poly model, but you know that's required for this kind of detail. So this m map is ready to export into Maya. Um, I'm just going to make it a, a poly mesh. And I'll take a moment, and then we're going to send this off, uh, export it. And let's call this um, Terrain Demo. OBJ, and we can put this into the right folder. Let's go into the Scenes folder here. Save it there. 
All right, and now let's switch over to Maya. So let's bring in that OBJ from ZBrush. So let's go to File and Import. And here it is. OK, so you might wonder, where the heck is this thing? It's just very small. If you drag around the center there or open up the outliner, you can see it right here as well. I'm just going to select it, hit F to frame up on that. And let's scale this and rotate it. Um, we're going to have to rotate it in um, positive or negative x. Let's do 90, minus 90. OK. And if you zoom in on it, you can see how it looks in Maya. And again, it's really tiny. So let's scale this up. Let's do something crazy like 8,000. OK. And that was zoom out. And you can see that our camera kind of gets clipped, right? And we can't see the model anymore. So to fix that, we just have to adjust the clipping plane settings for the camera. So we'll go up here and click on the Select Camera button. Control A, open up the Attribute Editor. And we just need to add some zeros to that far clip plane value. And there we go. Now we can see everything in that. All right. So now this does have a UV map on it, so you could start to texture uh, and, and paint this uh, using either procedural or traditional like bitmap painting techniques. One thing that I often do is I'll, I'll add a, a ramp or something and then uh, pipe things into the ramp colors. So let's hit Shift T and add a material here. And let's just make a Mia material X passes. All right, and then in the... Um, for the color, I'm going to click on this checker pattern here and load up a ramp. But I'm going to not use the traditional ramp. I'm going to use a projected ramp. So right click on ramp and then create as projection. All right, now that uh, projection should show up here in the outliner. And I'm going to just press this fit to group bounding box. All right, and look at that. It lined it up uh, in just the way I wanted it to, actually. Um, so now it's off to the side, and you can see that this is kind of the projection, and it's going across the landscape uh, horizontally. And that's how I want to control the um, different values of the valleys and the top parts and so on. So let's go into that ramp now. And here's um, where we can plug in the ramp. And then uh, just so I can illustrate this, let's switch this to a rainbow gradient. And let's press the 6 key and, and wait for a moment for that to load up. And you can see that um, using the ramp, I can actually control the individual parts of this map. I could uh, pipe something into the red, for example, or the green. And you can have individual textures or other ramps even uh, plugged in to each one of these color locations. And you can add more, too, just by clicking inside. right? And I could change that to be... Um, you know, let's say like a, a, a pinkish color. All right, so th it's, a, it's a very powerful way to control these maps. So once you get it um, into Maya, it, it should already have the UVs because it needs UVs to displace. Um, you can start to make this really photorealistic. I hope that was helpful.